hello hello and welcome to another video so in today's video i'm going to give you some practical tips about getting your house in order okay now i have made a series of videos of some with some downloads that the holy spirit gave me regarding this season of life how we need to prepare and then really some stuff that's coming up in the coming seasons that what you how you steward this season of your life is really going to dictate how much you're able to do in those next seasons okay i don't want anyone to follow me to be left out of anything okay and i definitely don't want to be held accountable and responsible that i came on here talking about everything aside from what the lord gave me to talk about okay so like I said, I gave a few messages, but today I want to give you guys some practical tips. Now, I do have notes here, um, but as I was preparing for this video, I actually came up with a whole nother topic that I did not put in my notes that we're going to go over today. Okay, so with that being said, these things might not work verbatim for you. However, I'm giving you an idea that it's possible, that you can do it. You can take the steps to get better like to do better in your life sitting down and complaining i cannot stand a sit down and complain about something and never change it and i also understand that sometimes you get into a place where you don't even know that you can change things but you're watching this video so i know that you know that you have the capability to change and in saying that, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Change is not easy. To see the type of growth that's going to transform not only your life, but a life of the generations that is to come is it's going to be uncomfortable. Think about the people who came before you, okay? Do you think their lives were the most comfortable so that you can live the comfortable life that you live right now? And even if your life isn't as comfortable as you think it should be or that you want it to be, be think about the people that came before you. How you're living right now is very comfortable to them. So, like I said, I want to go over some practical things. These might seem very minor, but sometimes you need to do minor things to make big changes, all right? So we're not going to complain because complaining isn't going to solve anything. We're actually going to do the work. Um, also, I want to tell you, um, I want to tell you this because just, I like to start off like this because some people might think that you think you're perfect, girl. I don't think I'm perfect at all, okay? I actually, I know I'm not. Actually, if I would say nothing, I would be fine with that because I know how imperfect I am. However, that is not the space that the Lord is leading me to, to sit in, okay? So I'm going to share with you what I know. Now, I'm going to tell you, you guys know, I'm in the room right now. So I have all of this craft stuff up here. I have all of this craft stuff up here. And some of it you can't see because it's hidden away in like the little closet over there, right? So there's craft stuff all over this house at one point in time um i had craft stuff in our little there's like a little outdoor thing out there like a storage room i had craft stuff in there my daughter's room her closet was fully filled with my massage things my closet was overflowing with stuff i had stuff everywhere i was buying stuff okay i was just the both of the kids were at school my husband at work i'm kind of in between taking massages not taking massages but i got stuff i'm buying stuff i got stuff all over the place okay i'm also buying stuff with the mindset of oh i'm gonna buy this for this and i never actually set and did the thing that i said i'm gonna buy this for this for if you know what i mean so that continued i did a lot of things you guys know you've been watching I um, went off to the military was really the final straw. I believe I believe the Lord let me go off into the military um, for a bunch of for a bunch of reasons. I believe he, he allowed it to happen, um, but also to show me one of the reasons was to show me that sometimes you'll get yourself into things that you just can't get out as easy as I was getting in and out of things. Right. So, like I said, I came back home and I continue to buy things. I would buy these beads. I mean, I would just buy just buying just buying just buying stuff and my husband um as lovely as he is he is a very supportive husband um he would never say don't buy that you don't need that what you're doing perhaps you should get a job or something like that so that we can afford all these things that you're buying he would never say that bless his heart he wouldn't say that okay so he never 
he was very loving. Oh, honey, you want to do this? Let's go ahead. Let's buy the stuff to do it. You want to do this? Let's go ahead. Let's put this in motion to do this. And I'm grateful for him being that, that kind of husband. However, it wasn't really working out with uh, what the Lord was trying to do in my life. Okay, so life went on. Life went on. Life went on. You've been here for a while. You know that the Lord speaks to me via dreams. Now, I'm going to share this dream with you. I'm not going to share all of the details because... You know, I'm not going to do that. Um, but I wanted to tell you because this was very significant in really making a change in my life, which is why I realized that I can tell you all of these things, but if you never really get it down in your spirit, you won't ever really make a change. So I'm praying that as I go through this list of stuff in these videos, so it's going to be a series of videos, um, that God really do a fresh work in your mind and he really brings about a change in your life. Okay. He pushes you into a change. So like I said, I was, I went to sleep. I had, um, in the dream, I'm in the dream. I'm preparing this specific thing for my husband. I wanted to have a good time and I wanted him to have a good time with me, but he wouldn't, he was looking like he was like looking all over the house. I mean, he was like looking under the pillow cushions. I mean, looking, I have something totally different planned. And he is looking all over the place for a dime. And I didn't realize until later on in the dream, I'm in the bathroom and on the other end of the door, he's like, honey, um, I really, he had, it was a bill that came up and he was looking at the bill and all he needed was this little dime. He just needed a dime to pay the bill. And I'm so focused on this thing that I got going on over here, honey, that I'm like, annoyed by the fact that he's looking for a dime to pay the bill. So in the bathroom, I said, here's a stupid dime. And I had a dime. For some reason, I had the dime, but he didn't have the dime. So I tossed the dime under the door and gave it to him. And I woke up from the dream. Now, this was a crazy part because when I woke up from the dream, this couch used to be over there. When I woke up from the dream, I came in here to like tell my husband the dream because I thought it was funny how I said like, I also, I thought it was funny, but I was also realizing there was a version of my husband that I wanted to see, but I was going about it the wrong way. I was trying to push him into this version all while failing to do this thing that will actually allow him to become that version. Okay, this ain't a marriage, uh, this ain't a marriage video necessarily, so I'm not gonna get into that. But I was going about it the wrong way. Okay, it's not my duty at all, it's God's duty. It's not my duty at all. So I come hopping in the front, about to tell him this funny dream, and he is on his phone. He has his phone open and he's scrolling, looking for a part time job. Now, my husband works a full time job, a full time career job. And he's looking for a part-time job to uphold all of these purchases that I'm making. And it was in that moment that the Holy Spirit said, Tanzania, enough is enough. It was at that moment. He didn't have to tell me anything. Nobody had to come out of the blue and tell me anything. It was the Holy Spirit convicting me, saying, Tanzania, enough is enough. Baby, I came in this living room and packed up them beads so quick. I packed up them beads. So I packed up, I packed up everything. I was about to give it all away because I realized that I was actually being foolish with my money. And in me being foolish with my money, I was actually being foolish with my marriage. And in me being foolish with my money and my marriage, I was actually being foolish with these kids. I was actually being a foolish woman over this home. And I said, Lord, if these beads are having me to sit in the seat of a fool, packing them all up. I packed all them beads up. I turned off YouTube. I took all that stuff off my phone. I took all this stuff off my iPad. And I had a real like sit with God. And really for like a week straight, I was like, Lord, whatever you would have me to do. And a little later, after spending some time and realizing I didn't have to give it all up, but I did have to change the way that I was going about life. So, I hope that was a good segue into what we're going to talk about because like I said, I want you to know that I'm not perfect at all, okay? I've had struggles just like you. However, I realize that at some point you have their serious repercussions for you failing to get out of the struggle and get into something new, okay? The children, they're getting older. Time's going by. There is repercussions, for you failing to do the right thing. 
I was holding my daughter this morning on the couch. We was like hugging and, and I was praying over her. And I realized had I stayed in the military, even though it was something I wanted to do and God allowed me to do it, had I stayed there, I would not get a chance to see my children in the way that I get a chance to see my children now. I would not get a chance to hold my children and make sure that they're okay. And I'm not saying that my husband didn't do a great job while I was gone, but he was doing a job that he didn't have to do. Had I sat in the right seat, had I stopped wandering all over here and wandering all over there thinking I need to do this and trying to do that and not really sitting in the place that God would have me to be. Um, so I said all that, let's get into the first topic. I'm gonna talk about this one first because it's not on my notes. Like I said, I was preparing the video and the Holy Spirit laid this one on me. And that is um, health. You need to get your health in order. I want you to think of a time and think of a world and even now think of a space where the doctors don't have the best answer for you. I will go off to say that some doctors don't even have the right answer for you. So you're really going to have to cultivate this space where you get a chance to know know that you know that you know your body, but you will get a chance to know your body and know you know, maybe some sicknesses and things may arise that you can really communicate with God with God about and he will teach you like he will he will let you know exactly what you need to do exactly what foods you need to eat exactly what foods you need to exclude how much you need to move like this is not things that are so far off that God can't be involved in okay he he is God of all he can he can come into your life and get down with you on the intricacies of your life have a doctor find a doctor that you can actually trust that has your best interest at heart it's a dangerous space to be in to be leaning fully on um I'm trying to be nice in saying this uh pharmaceutical companies and just the medical field in general when we can't trust what they're doing and I'm, I love doctors. I love doctors. I love the ability to be able to, girl, here, here's my, uh, my maintenance people coming. Hold on. Okay, I'm sorry about that. The maintenance people are coming to um, fix the toilet, and they did. So here we are. Like I said, I love the ability to be able to um, go to the emergency room, go to the doctor if you need to go to the doctor. You know, stuff arises that we need doctors for we need medical professionals for we have emergency rooms we have all that kind of stuff it's beautiful but to lean 100 percent on that when god the great physician okay like you have the great physician in your corner it's just foolish so that's one thing like i said it's not on my notes but i did want to say get a hold of your health get a hold of it get a hold of it know your stance know your status know where your body is know where you stand know what you need to do know where your weaknesses are work on them okay um oh i like fried foods and your blood pressure is through the roof and you don't want to do anything about it and you're just leaning on these doctors and leaning on this medicine and all that kind of stuff that's not and I'm not, medicine is beautiful like I said I don't don't get get it twisted here medicine is beautiful if you need medicine it's beautiful it's beautiful to be able to have these things it's beautiful to be, be able to have glasses and to be able it's beautiful it's beautiful but to lean fully on these things is a danger that you don't want to you don't want to be in okay Let's move to the first point that I have on my notes. And obviously, by the tone of this, that first part of the video, you can tell finances. Finances is very important. Like I told you guys, moving into this next season of life, I want you to be able to be financially secure and financially in the space that you need to be in. Like, period. Financially able to take care of yourself. Financially able to provide for your children. Financially in a good space that you don't have to lean on other people who whose goal may be to deceive you. Okay? And the one way that you can do that is you can get a hold of your finances. You need to discover what is it that I need to do to get the money, to get the resources that I need to get. Do I need to downsize? Okay. You guys know, like, I'm not, I'm not just talking out of side of my neck here. We live, the four of us lived in a one bedroom apartment during the coronavirus. Now, in my opinion, 
Like we moved out of a house that I was running the daycare in. You guys know we we had a little family something something going on. We moved into this. I moved into this one bedroom. Later we all moved into this one bedroom together. And I didn't know it, but God was moving us in this position because a lot was going on in the world okay we downsize we all stay in there we got more connected as a family um it was just a good time of bonding and really coming together what we needed to do as a family because some of the things that had occurred before but it was also a good financial move okay um we had money coming into the house more than enough money coming into the house but it was a time that we did need the money leaving out of the home because none of us knew how things were going to go in the pandemic okay none of us knew so um you really need to begin to organize your finances you know if you're spending too much money if you don't know you need to this is what i, I did this sometime um last week took my bank account and actually took every single expense and made a chart with it i mean like made a just made a spreadsheet Take all the expenses from that spreadsheet, begin to highlight the stuff that you're spending that you don't need to spend. Fast food and things like that. Begin to highlight it. See how much money you're actually spending and get a hold of your spending. I know people like this. I never honestly have been this person, um, but I know this does happen. Some people like to, y'all like to be out. You like to go to the club with your money. You like to eat out with your friends. You go out and drink your money. Like you are wasting resources. You race wasting resources. And if you see like, oh, well, I make, let's say you make $5,000 a month, okay? And then you're only spending $1,000 like aimlessly. That's still $1,000 that you're going to be held accountable for not doing the right thing with it. Give that, if, if it's so not a big deal to you, give it to the poor. If it's not a big deal to you, give it to someone who needs. Stop spending your money aimlessly, okay? Please stop spending your money aimlessly all these fast food dates and stuff like that if you want to go on like a date with your friends go outside do something that's free go to the park gather around at the house and have a bible study do something that don't cost you no money but stop spending your money aimlessly every time you go to the store you come back in a house with a house full of stuff and then that stuff that you got at your house is not organized and in order Stuff is all over the place. Like I said, I'm not talking to you. I'm not saying this just because it's you. I'm saying this for myself too. You just keep buying stuff. And then when you actually go through the stuff that you have, you have duplicates. Stop spending your money reckless. Stop being reckless with the resources God has given you. So, can you afford, um, can you afford the way that you're living? canceling subscriptions and things of that nature we recently i found out we found out that we're actually um our like some of our subscriptions that we had been paying for we actually paid for them twice because they came free with our cell phone service so we have been spending what it's almost a year at this point let's say twenty dollars a month or a year wasting money Take a look at your finances, okay? These apps and stuff like that, baby, they don't care. They don't care if you give them all your money. You got like 10 buy now, pay later, stuff that you don't even need. I was there, okay? Door dash, like, what do you call it? Uh, zip the little buy now, pay later thing. Zip and door dash, just hundreds and hundreds of dollars going out weekly. It's ridiculous. Clean up your finances. It's imperative, okay? And the money that you do have left over. Remember I told you guys in that video, I actually showed you in one of the video. I told you, I gave you a word in another video. Um, I have a space in my home with extra supplies because some of us are shopping at the grocery store like we're gonna always be able to go there and get what we need, okay? Remember during the pandemic, how stuff was just like flying off the shelves? You need to have a storehouse in your house that if the same thing were to occur, you were ready. So if you do have a disposable income, you need to be putting stuff away. And don't just, okay, you say, I got enough stuff for my family. Well, put stuff away, put enough stuff away that you can share with another family who's in need. That's how you need to begin to look at your finances. Another thing, um, like I said, is ma make a master list of your expenses, which goes in the same thing. Um, can you afford the way that you're living and fast food meals? I was there 10 fast food meals a week just, and we're a family of four. So when I say fast food, you know, we're spending like $40 each time you eat fast food. And then you're complaining on the other end about how you're working too much. How you working too much, how you don't get to spend enough time with your children, yet you're spending all the money that would allow you to spend more time with your children. Take a look at your finances.
okay let's move on to the next thing all right so let's talk about food this one is a bit difficult um, because i am i am just getting a hold on this one myself stop eating so much fast food but how do i eat not eat so much fast food but when i really want the food that i really want but then i don't know how to make it you know how to make it we have google we have recipes um you need to make a, a grocery list a grocery budget that fits the family's needs that doesn't cause you to spend money that you don't have okay one thing that i have have been doing for a while now that really works out well is make a running grocery list so i have a master list on my phone right now and every time i go in the kitchen and we out of something either i see it or my husband tells me kennedy tells me my son tells me whoever hey we're out of this i add it to my grocery list so when it's grocery time when it's time to go grocery shopping i'm not just aimlessly in the grocery store okay I, i'm going to the grocery store with a purpose i'm not picking up things that i don't need another thing that i do is put the prices next to the things on my list and if when i go in the grocery store the price is too high you know the grocery store prices have changed so of course i make them match what's in the grocery store but if they're too high i do not buy them okay so that I can stick to my grocery budget. Now, if I have to get in the car and kind of recompute, like, oh, this is how much money I spent here. I still have this amount left over. I know that I can get this from this store. I'll do that. But I'm not just going to go in the grocery store and do what I used to do, which was, you know, I said I was only going to spend $100. I end up with $300 worth of groceries in my basket, and I just swiped my card and rolled out with it. Absolutely not. Because that $200 was for something else. Okay, it was maybe it was for a bill, maybe it was it was allocated to something else. And instead of sticking to the budget that I set, I'm changing around stuff in the budget, and I'm not doing that. Okay, no, 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 we're not doing that. So I put the prices next to the things so that I can stay on budget. The next thing is meal plan and stick to the meal plan. Um, now this is going to take a lot of communication and a lot of like collaborations within the house. And if you can't collaborate with your spouse, um, stick around. That's another video. Okay. Because we're going to need some collaboration. You can't, if you can't collaborate with one another, you're not going to be able to level up. You will not be able to move to the next level. Um, how can two walk together unless they agree? Every time I take a step, you got something to say. Every time I take a step, you're, you're not agreeing with me. You're in disagreement. Okay. We're going to have to work on those things. We're going to have to work on those things. So like I said, Definitely going to take some communication within the house, but meal plan and stick to the meal plan. It helps. That way you can see, like, this is the meals that we can afford. And begin, this is the next thing, to portion out those meals. Using little salad baggies. I showed you guys this. If you take a look at my day in life videos, you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. But portioning things out in little baggies, whether it be the kids' snacks, whatever. Don't allow these kids to just be going in the kitchen, just running through food that you can't afford to replenish. Okay? All right. The next thing is simplify your food, okay? The more you make, the more food that you make, the more food that you do not buy processed, that you don't buy already made, the less money you spend. It's that simple. Does it take extra time? Absolutely. I am sick of people. And I do mean sick of people saying, like, oh, like, this doesn't leave you, it, doing all this doesn't leave me any time for me. Doing this, this makes me so tired. It don't leave no time for, for me to do my thing. Well, as a mother, as the woman of your in your household, the woman of your household, I'm not saying you're over the man, that's not what I'm saying, but in your position as the woman of your house, it is a very tiring job. Come on, Proverbs 31 woman. This is a very tiring job. But you want the benefits. You want to reap the fruit of doing this job well. Therefore, you have to do this job. Okay? So simplify your food. Um, we have started eating a lot of eggs, a lot of pancakes, you know, buying things like potatoes. Just very simple foods. Not sticking to any kind of crazy diet. Just sticking to foods that are just foods. Okay? When I used to be buying chicken nuggets and french fries. Baby, you want some french fries? They got potatoes. You can make some french fries. You want some potato chips? We have a mandolin. Okay? There's a mandolin. There's some potatoes. You can make some potato chips. But buying all this stuff, all these processed foods is skyrocketing your grocery bill. We call it food stamp food, skyrocketing grocery bill. All right, so the next thing, and this might be very controversial, but that's okay. Um, going to the food pantries. During the pandemic, I don't know if they did this in your area, but they did it in my area. During the pandemic, um, at the height of the pandemic, girls, we still got pandemic going on. But um, they had, the, the schools, schools would do like little drive throughs and you would go through and pick up lunch for the families. It wasn't just the kids who were enrolled. They said like, how many kids 
you had to have kids in your family but how many people in your household and you picked up meals for all of those people it was very i loved it i loved the way everyone came together and really helped the community but there are food pantries in your area I know for certain there are food pantries in my area and they're not just for like there are soup kitchens for people who are homeless and actually don't have a place to cook meals. And then there are food pantries for people who do not qualify for things like SNAP benefits, because believe it or not, you can make enough money to not qualify for SNAP and still not be able to afford food. That's a thing. But let me tell you, the food that the food pantries give out, it's not like processed foods, okay? You're not going to be eating in a lap of luxury. So maybe, you know, acclimate that palate to food that you can actually afford. And food is simply fuel, okay? Food is fuel. Yes, food is fun. The food, food is a lot of things. But if, if we talking about food because we need to eat, food is fuel. We haven't yet got to the celebration part because we need to get some things in order in our home to where food can also be a celebration. Okay, all right. And if you do qualify for food stamps, take this as a time to put that supply together that I told you about. So those beans, those rice, those canned goods, those things that you can put away. And perhaps, have you ever considered if you do get food stamps to share with someone else? When I used to get food stamps, you know what I used to do? Hey girl, what you need from the store? I used to share and it's crazy I used to share and I can't get nobody to share with me but if you have food stamps and you have more than enough food and you're not buying crazy stuff like you're eating lobster every night and and you know seafood boils every night I know I, I used to do it seafood boils every night perhaps you should share perhaps you should share okay um and like i said begin to acclimate your palate perhaps getting off of the food stamps because remember what i told you before a lot of these state programs they're created to keep you in systems to keep you never never getting control of your budget okay so that you can live a better life never increasing your income because you're afraid that you won't be able to qualify for food stamps never leveling up in life and that's not what we want and the next thing and the last thing is budget grocery stores baby when i tell you i used to be against budget grocery stores and it was just something about the lighting just bothered me reminded me of like a bad time in childhood my mom used to take us to this store called save a lot and i hated it girl i'm trying to locate the save a lot now we have a store called Food Town here. Um, that's a budget grocery store. You guys know Aldi. They don't have very many choices, but when I tell you, so I had a crazy experience with Aldi and I was like, I ain't going back to this grocery store. And then I went to Walmart and I noticed I only have two bags in my hand and I've already spent $70 and I had a basket full of groceries at Aldi for the same price. So I need to do something different. So I definitely started to shop at Aldi all these are great one. I know a lot of people have them. Budget grocery stores. Stores like H-E-B and Kroger. I believe you guys know Food Lion in some places. I've been to a Food Lion. Buy Low. Those grocery stores, Publix. Girl, you spend all your little money in there. Now, I'm not saying you can't go there at all. Because some, like, I wanted some of the artificial crab meat. I had to go to H-E-B for that, okay? And it was cheaper there. But for the most part, I would find a budget grocery store and I would frequent there. Okay, I'd frequent them. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. All right, so you guys know, um, you probably haven't seen the video yet, but as you can tell, can you tell? Yeah, you can tell. Things are organized in here, okay? Um, I am not by nature the most organized person. I am kind of a wake up and wherever the wind blows me, wherever, you know, that's what I'm doing. However, I realized that even wherever the wind blows you, you better have organ organization to go there, okay? So everything, even though I have a lot of things, they're very organized because if they're organized, I can access them. If I can access them, I can actually use them, okay? All right, so just to have a home just, just a hot mess, I wouldn't advise, I'd advise against. Um, we Yesterday, we took time to organize all my daughter's um, hair supplies. You know why? Because when it's time to do her hair, I want it to be a good experience. And how can it be a good experience when things are all over the place and you're frustrated because you can't find the things that you need? It's not the children's problem. It's your problem. Get organized. I know you're working a full-time job. You're tired. You don't feel like it. But it doesn't matter. Get organized. Get organized. I have seen people whose cars have enough trash in it to actually be a dump pile. Get organized. You need to get organized. 
organized. And when you get organized, guess who else will get organized? These kids. But you're asking them to do something that you haven't done. And that's unfortunate. Get organized. Organize the home. It does not. I made those labels over there with these labels that are on this little basket and the labels on there with paper. Okay. If you don't have a laminating machine, you can use paper. You can use tape. You can label things. You can get organized. They don't have to be Instagram organization. These things came from Dollar Tree. And even when you don't have little things like that, guess what you can do? It can still be clean and organized without you having some type of system to organize it in. Get organized. Get organized. OK, one of the things that I like is creating a master cleaning list for the whole house. So a task that you can do every single day. Not a day goes by that I do not clean something in this house. You know why? Because at some point in the week it's going to be a hot mess. So, you know, your home best. I can't give you like I can show you a picture of my cleaning list, but it might not suit your home. Well, your home might be bigger than mine. Your home might be smaller than mine. You might not have some of the tasks to do. So you need to make yourself a list. Just sit down at the end of the night. Get up early in the morning. Girl, get it together. OK, sit down and make yourself a master cleaning list for this home. Um, the next thing is make a cleaning checklist for each room. What do I need to do when, when I go in this room? Um, because you can't remember everything. And to get some of these things off of your memory pile of things to do, um, I call it like your memory Rolodex, get it off my little checklist, you need to have a list. I know when I go in this room, this is what I'm looking for to be clean. You know, when you go to hotels, they have a checklist, a good hotel. When I used to work for Marriott, the housekeeping staff, they had checklists of what needs to be done in every room. You know why? Because no matter how good you are, you're going to forget something on a day maybe you're not so good. Or maybe you have a lot of stuff to do. Okay? So... I would say, you know, if you want to, if you have a lot of rooms in your house or you maybe don't have a lot of room in your house. I have three rooms in my house. You can do a room a day. So you can do your master list and you can do a room a day just to once over it and make sure these things are done in this room. Things like dusting and things of that nature. Okay. And the next thing is um, keep a list for the things that need to be cleaned. So let's say right now, along with my grocery checklist, I also have a checklist of just general things that I need to do for the house. So if I need to make someone an appointment at the top of this list, that is there. If there's a special number that I need, that is in that list. If there's something that I want to buy for the month, a place that I want to visit, all of these things are in the list. You know why? Because I can't remember everything and I don't want to. I don't want to be thinking about this stuff all day long, but I know that it needs to get done. So right now I'm looking, I'm I'm sitting on this floor and I'm looking and I can see dust under this little thing over here. I could write that down and say this needs to be cleaned. OK, so then when I'm sitting down and I'm doing my list of things that I need to do for the week, my to do's. I need to dust under there. OK, I was walking past my blinds the other day. And I was in my son's room, as a matter of fact, and his blinds was really dusty and it brought to my remembrance. I actually need to get in here and dust the blinds. OK, so you could do so like that. You could put it on the list. Don't feel the need to do it at this moment right now. But to just say that it needs to be done and do and take no steps in getting it done is asinine. OK, it is asinine. The next thing that I have is organize and labor, which I mentioned before. Very simple paper type, type it out, paper, print it out, tape it on there. Or you can do what I did, which was laminated. You do not have a have to have a laminated machine. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Um, this is the first process in us getting our house together. Like I said, I want you to go to to go and watch the messages about getting your house in order because the first step in getting your house in order as you can tell from the first part of this video is to really be aligned with God okay but after that point after you've aligned with God he will reveal some things that you need to do and I want you to know that it's okay if you actually need to get in your house like physically you need to take care of your house you're asking God to bless you with this and bless you with that bless me with a new job bless me on my job bless me here and bless me there and your house is a mess and maybe not just like a physical mess, maybe emotionally, is your house a mess emotionally? Is the people in your house, are they emotionally sound? Are you emotionally distant from the people in your home? Is your home a mess? Get your house in order. Get your house in order. Stop worrying about everybody else, okay? So as always, if you have a question, ask a question and I'll see you in the next video.